Hi everybody, I'm Jay from Ukulele Jay Barbecue, and today I'm giving you another KISS method for your knife sharpening. KISS standing for Keep It Sharpening Simple. I see so many videos of guys that are getting into so much detail and extreme complexity. It's just not needed. And I'm gonna have people argue this point with me all day long, but I'm telling you, I am not a professional knife person. I'm a personal chef and a pit master. I've done barbecue for 25 years. I've been cutting meat and cooking meat, and I started sharpening all my knives years ago because it was very expensive to take my knives to the farmer's market and at the time, pay like five bucks a knife to get them sharpened. Now it's costing you 10, $12 a knife. So one of the things that I did is I wanted to make sure to bring educational videos to people to show them that knife sharpening is not complicated. Now I have the manual sharpeners that are out there that I love, and there's videos I have on those, and there's also the power sharpeners. When it comes to the kitchen, the Tormek T1 is my preferred kitchen knife sharpener. It is a power sharpener. It has a 600 grit diamond wheel on this, and it has a power honing wheel that's already impregnated, so you don't need to put any honing paste on it, and it's gonna last you a very, very long time with an eight-year warranty. You just can't go wrong with Tormek. Tormek has other lines as well, such as the T2, the T4, and the T8, and as you get more involved with knives, I wanna do different things. There are limitations with the T1 that goes beyond kitchen knives, but for those of you that wanna sharpen basic, kitchen knives and basic everyday carry knives, the Tormek T1 really excels. Now, one of the things that I have used forever is a multi-tool. This is the Craftsman Leatherman. It's actually my favorite multi-tool. I've beat the hell out of this thing. I've had it for super, super long time, probably almost 20 years. They look a little different now. They come in different you know, shapes and sizes. But when it comes to the knife, it's got a really nice blade on this. Uh, it's lasted me a long time. It's pretty thrashed. You can see here, it's actually not the best of shape, but we're gonna go ahead and clean it up and we're gonna sharpen it on the Tormek T1. I also have some other great knives like the Lakota. This one is a knife I've had forever. It's a fantastic knife. I've got some Damascus EDCs. I've got some tactical knives and I have a SOG, which is actually a very popular knife that's used for just about everything outside. So these knives can all be sharpened successfully on the Tormek. One of the things with the Tormek that I wanna make sure people understand is it is one speed. So you don't have to worry about, is it too slow, is it too fast? It is the correct speed for this 600 diamond grit wheel. And with the proper strokes back and forth, I can get this thing razor sharp. And that's because of the way this device operates. Now, one of the things you should have in addition to the T1 is a leather strop. Now I have several leather strops. They're actually available in my Amazon store. So go ahead and take a look in there and make sure you pick up a really nice leather strop. There really is no right or wrong leather strop. I like the paddle strops for certain things that I can hold at an angle when I'm actually stropping the knife. This side has both a rough, which really isn't rough. It's more of a, uh, a coarser leather side, which is kind of the suede side. And you have the smooth leather side. I've actually stropped on both and gotten incredible results as well as this one, which is actually one of my favorite ones. It's a sharp all and it's a fantastic leather strop. You can find these in my Amazon store, but make sure you get the Tormek PA70 compound. This is a 3000 grit compound. I talk about it in my videos. We'll go into it a little bit on this video, but it is probably the one compound you need and no other compound. And that will do for 99% of the people watching this video. So Tormek PA70, great compound, equivalent to about a 3000 grit, which is really all you need to get your knives super, super sharp. And make sure you have yourself a marker. This is the Tormek EM15. It is a marker that I love. It's actually designed to mark up knives with the way it's chiseled, but any marker will do. I just happen to really like the Tormek edge markers. They hold on well to the metal. Some of the even permanent markers I have actually rub off on some of the steel and don't stay on. This one does a really good job. Now, in order to sharpen a knife, we have to know what the edge angle is or the angle at the apex. And without getting into too much complexity, I'm gonna keep it simple for sharpening. So this blade has an angle. We don't know what that angle is. I actually don't know what it is. I haven't sharpened this in so long that we're gonna go ahead and find out the angle. We're gonna take our marker, and this is a very standard way to do angle checks on your knife. And we're gonna go ahead and run this along the apex, just the very edge, and cover up right where you see kind of the shiny parts. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. 
And this has a nice groove that holds onto there. And if you can see this, we covered up just the edge of this knife. We're gonna do it, and that way it's gonna show us the angle. We only have to do one side, because if you're doing both sides equally, you only need to determine one angle side, and you can then do it on the other side as well, and you'll have a nice, even apex. Now, most kitchen knives are gonna be between 15 and 20 degrees for their angle, and that is a standard you'll see among the culinary industry. Sushi knives will go down to even 10 or 12 degrees, but that's a really specialty knife that most people are never gonna handle and they're not gonna use. When it comes to everyday carry knives or field knives, the angle is gonna be greater, so you're probably gonna be in the 20 plus degree, sometimes 22, 25, 30, 35 degrees. And so for this, I'm gonna start at 20 degrees with my field knives, and I'm gonna run this diamond wheel and see where it takes off the marker. Now, if the marker, looking at this blade, and I have the angle set, if the marker is removed from the very bottom, right, that angle's too steep, right, because it's not getting the full length of that marker. If I'm getting the top of the marker and not the bottom, and you see that, that means that your angle is too steep and I've got to actually open the angle up. So we're going to start at 20 and I'm going to adjust. I have a feeling it's going to be greater than 20. If it is, we're going to go ahead and open that up. So I should see the top of the marker being taken off and not the bottom. If this is 20, it'll be dead on. So let's take a look and see what it is. So right here is the angle guide and you can see here I have this set at 20 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and start there and see what type of result we get on our knife. You can actually even turn it on. That's not going to hurt. It's very quiet. We're going to put it in here and just run it across, and we're going to see what this edge looks like when we're done. So just one stroke across, and if your knife's a different angle, don't worry, you're not going to screw it up. So this knife, oh damn, it's 20 degrees. You can see here where I took it off. You can see that? All the marker's gone, so we're about a 20 degree angle on this thing. Now the back end of this knife has this huge uh, part that holds the other components in. It fits up right against this holder, which is actually fine. So when you run this in like so, you're gonna make sure that you go up right against it. Don't hold it at an angle, make sure you're going perfectly smooth in, and this guide's gonna help you keep that blade straight. We're gonna start going all the way down, and as you go down, push the blade all the way in, and just you'll hear it hitting, and then just pull it across nice and slow, like such. This part is gonna hit this part, and you're gonna have, you're gonna have like a little drop, so when you hit it, see that, how it drops? Okay, you don't want that. You're not gonna get a good sharpening. So, I do a little cheat. Now, this is not something that Tormek recommends. I'm just showing you how I've used this to do versatile things that Tormek even sometimes says, geez, Jay, we didn't even think about that. But it works, and it does. So what I do is, because the guide here is centered, this angle in here is the same angle as going inside. This just holds it a little more stable. But with enough practice and a lot of muscle memory, I'm used to holding these knives very straight without doing any type of wrist movement. I lock my wrist in. And so what I do is I use this part right in here as my guide. And what you can do is you can check on the inside if you go down and place it against here. And be careful, there's a magnet up here to capture all the shavings. So if you put it up here, your knife's gonna stick. So just get past that magnet on the inside a little bit, run it down. And once you're in, you're in. And now you can actually start without hitting anything like so and run this across. And if you look at your knife, I've taken all of that marker off, but I haven't impacted the upper part of that apex. This is not a problem on kitchen knives, but on everyday carries, depending on what it is, with a huge bolster on these things like this, you may have a problem. This one especially has an issue, but I thought it's a challenge, so I wanna show you how to do one of the more challenging knives because anything else that's thinner like this is gonna be really simple. Run this in like so. And I'm gonna keep it going across, nice and smooth. That is getting a really nice edge on that. We'll go ahead and turn around the other way. And I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna move in this way so you can see me here. And I'm gonna run it back across this, this way. And what's nice this way is you can see if there's any spacing between here by seeing light through there. There should be no light. Your blade should come down at the right angle. It should make a connection, and you should see no light between that blade. And we're just gonna go ahead and run that through like so. And you know you can go back and forth, by the way. You can, you can do this and you can go back this way. You'll see a lot of people doing that. But for this type of knife, I just like to kind of go one way only because I feel like I have more precision and more control than going back and forth, especially because I'm not really in the guide and I'm more of a free hand on this. So I want to make sure I get this nice, nice and uh, even. And after I make four or five passes, I can see that most of the marker is actually off 
on the knife, and you can see here, on this side, there's no marker left. But we still have quite a bit to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen this up. We'll go back and show you how I actually hone this on the T1. We're gonna go ahead and hone this with the honing wheel on each end. And the honing takes off if there's a burr, which I can tell you there's no burr on this because I haven't done enough to get a burr, but it will actually take off that burr, it'll actually polish that edge and get you ready for this dropping phase. So I'm gonna go through it, I'm gonna run this across like so. I usually start at the back and there's no right way, you can start at the front of the back and I run across like so. This is actually taking off any of the micro abrasions, which there will be across the knife. And I usually do two passes on this. You wanna make sure you're at the proper angle and you'll learn that with muscle memory, but you don't wanna be like that because you'll start seeing all the honing material start scraping off, which means you actually have it too steep. And if you do it too slight, then what you'll do is you won't actually polish off that apex, nor will you take off the micro abrasions. So you gotta find the sweet spot. And the nice thing about this is that you don't need the compound. So I just run it across slightly, just, just the weight of the knife. You don't have to push on it at all. Bring it across nice and slow, and that will actually get that side nice and polished. And you can see here, if you look at the apex, it is really looking good. Okay. So we're gonna go now and turn it over and do the other side. And you'll all see on some videos, they may do this and go back and forth. People ask, can you hone too much? Not really. If you go forward, you know, four or five times, not the end of the world. What you can do though, is you can make your knife dull because if you take the knife at too steep of an angle, you're gonna start rubbing on that nice sharp apex and it's gonna make the knife dull pretty quick. Now, when it comes to stropping, and the pronunciation is strop, not strope, I made the mistake when I first started as well and said, oh, it's a strope. People came out and lambasted, it's a strop, you don't know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. It's a strop. And there are a couple types of strop styles. There are ones that are on blocks, just like this, without a handle, that come with a real nice non-slip bottom. And this is granite, which is super slick. It does not move at all. So these are great. These are the Sharples and these are in my Amazon store, as well as the Hutzels, which I really love these as well. These are, um, I think, one of the best drops for the money out there. It's got a fantastic buffalo hide uh, leather on here and a really nice suede side as well. Um, if I have a knife that might be a little rough, I might run it on here to try to get some of those abrasions off. But at the end of the day, I pretty much stick to the smooth side. Now, this one, as you can see, says 8,000. Um, I use a diamond compound that I won't go into because that gets into some complexities that most people are not gonna have to go into. Uh, and then typically for my everyday stropping, this is all I use, just this. You'll see there's kind of some white color on here, and that's from the Tormek PA70 paste. Now, I wanna show you the proper way to put this on, um, and the only wrong way is you use too much. This a little bit, goes a really long way. I've had this for well over a year and you can see there's still a ton in this tube left. So when you put this on, you only need to put on a couple little dabs. We're talking like, that's it. That's all I put on. So you can see that? That's all you need. If you put on a lot more than that, you're, one, you're just wasting the product and two, you're gonna end up gunking up your strop. And then what I do is I take my finger and I just do this and just rub that in. and you'll feel it getting really smooth, and it's gonna start getting white. And even though it looks real dark, I'm rubbing it all over this. So this, you can see the white here, so my finger is getting all over the leather strop. And within a few minutes, it's gonna be ready to go. Now within a few minutes, you're gonna see this starts to kind of haze over. If it's not fully hazed over, it's okay. You still can use it to strop. Again, we're keeping it sharpening simple. We don't have to say, oh, you need to wait you know, 20 minutes, and it's gotta be perfectly dry. You can go and do it, when it looks like this, and it's gonna come out just fine. Now, when you strop your knife, this is very important. The angle on this is 20 degrees. You have to know with muscle memory where that 20 degrees is. If you do it too shallow, you're really doing nothing to the knife. You're just kind of wasting your energy and time. If it's too sharp, especially if you put weight on it, you're gonna dull the edge very quickly because leather is a soft surface, even though it feels hard, and this is a firm leather piece. When you push down, the leather actually wraps up on the back end, and as you're dragging it across, it's gonna actually hit that apex that you just sharpened, and it's gonna start taking that down. So make sure, for one, you don't use a lot of pressure because it's not needed, and if you do strop at the wrong angle, you'll do less of a unsharpening 
than you would if you used a hard angle, which will very quickly unsharpen that blade. To do this, you wanna place the blade, and, and again, how you place the strop doesn't matter. It's how you're comfortable for ergonomics. Uh, my wrists and my elbows lock in, and I run the blade across the leather strop like so. And sometimes I even will pivot my waist and keep everything straight so that I'm not flexing the knife at all. Some people do it straight across like this, and they run it this way. I find it more comfortable to be at an angle. Again, there's no right or wrong way when it comes to where you place the strop. It's more about the pressure and the angle as you run that blade across the leather strop. So we put this down on here, and I know that when I push this down, I can feel the back of this blade and I make sure I feel that it's even. Once I feel that it's even with the leather and smooth, I bring it up just a little bit. I mean, we're talking just a hair fraction. That's gonna let you hit that back end of that apex. We're not gonna unsharpen it, but it's gonna let us polish that. And it actually does sharpen the knife more. Honing realigns the actual blade itself at the bottom. It doesn't really sharpen. With the leather strop, you are doing micro sharpening when it comes to this, especially when you use a Tormac PA70 compound. So we're gonna run this across like so, and people will do it this way starting at the tip, and they'll come down and run the blade up like this and across. There'll be people that will only go across like this. Again, you can do it either way, and it's gonna come out fine because we're KISS. Keep it sharpening simple. So we're gonna run this across. I always start and kind of go across this way. If it's a bigger knife, I'll even take it and just run it across like so. And if, it, you know, if it's really big, I'll run it in two stages. I'll run the back stage across like so and get the back of the knife if it's a really big knife. And then I'll do the front stage of the knife. You don't have to worry. You're not gonna make so much of a difference that this part is super sharp and this side is not as sharp. It's, it's gonna be sharp, trust me. And you know, I do maybe eight or nine passes on one side, flip it over, and then we're gonna do the other side like so. Um, you don't have to do it like this real fast. People say, how fast do you have to go? I mean, I certainly wouldn't go real slow, but you know, just a nice pace is all you need like this to just go across. You wanna have kind of some good speed, but it doesn't have to be super, super fast. And we're gonna run this across and you can do just the tip if you want. Get out there, get yourself a strop, drop down to my Amazon store and look for the Tormac T1. You check out all my other videos on knife sharpening right up here. And when we're done with this, okay, this is gonna be pretty sharp. So we're gonna go ahead and see where this is at. And we'll do our little paper test that everybody likes to see. And again, there's no, okay, do it five times this way, six times this way, do it twice, two series and you're done. I just do it until I feel that it's ready to go. The one thing I will warn you about is never take your knife and put it down this way because you'll cut the leather. If you cut the leather, you pretty much have ruined it. And uh, I have ruined a couple strops, just, just the side, you don't throw it away, but you basically cut your space down from a full length, which you really like to have, to maybe you know half a length on the leather strop. But you know what, even a half a length on the strop, you can do it. And just make sure it's really smooth. It looks great. And you can see that that edge is really polished. If you can see that with the light. Everybody likes to see paper cut or magazines cut. I've got a bunch of paper from my cigar magazine. Indian motorcycle, that's pretty cool. Just like so. Like that. It's razor sharp. And it's back to normal. I can use it again now. And as long as you hone this regularly, this will last quite a long time before you have to actually apply it to the diamond stone and actually sharpen the blade. Please like and subscribe for more of my knife sharpening and my cooking tutorial videos as well. Don't forget, with every knife, there's a good cook. And with every knife, there's a good purpose. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I have a lot more Tormek stuff to come. I'll see you on the next one. Smoke on, baby.